Okay, let's go over your Unit 4 mid-test review. This first answer is scalene, and that's because all the sides are different lengths, and I know that because they have different number of tick marks. So when no sides are the same length, it's scalene. The second one wanted us to classify by angles, and since all these angles are less than 90 degrees, it's an acute triangle. Okay. This section wants to know if the three links would form a triangle. And then if they do, we want to classify what kind of triangle it is. So remember, the two smallest sides added up have to be greater than the third side. And what's 8 plus 10? 18. Is 18 greater than 20? No. That's why this does not make a triangle. Your two smallest sides added together have to be larger than the third. Number four, this one doesn't make a triangle either. If I take my two smallest sides, 8 and 8, and add those up, I want to know if that's greater than 16. 8 plus 8 is 16, and 16 is not greater than 16. 16 is equal to, not greater than. So, this does not make a triangle either. Now, 5, this one does make a triangle. When all the sides are the same length, it is called an equilateral triangle. If I take those two smallest, two smallest sides, 13 and 13, does that make it bigger than the other side, 13? Yes, 26 is greater than 13. So yes, this makes a triangle, and it's equilateral because all the sides are the same length. Okay, here we want to name the sides from shortest to longest. So remember, the shortest side is across from the smallest angle. So here's my smallest angle, and if I go all the way across from it, that lands me to side AB. So that would be my shortest side. My next smallest angle is the 61, and the side across from it is side BC. And if I go to my biggest angle, 87, the longest side will be all the way across from it, which is side AC. Now, do keep in mind, these letters could be switched around. You could have segment BA, you could have segment BC, and you could have segment AC. They mean the same thing. So the smallest side is across from the smallest angle, and the biggest side is across from the biggest angle. <coughs> okay, let's move on to number seven. Number seven wants to know what are the angles from largest to smallest? So it's reverse of what we just did. The largest angle will be across from the largest side. So here's our largest side, and the angle across from it is angle M. The next largest side is 12, and the angle across from it is angle N. And the smallest side, 5, makes angle L the smallest angle. Okay, number 8 wants to know what the third angle would be and what kind of triangle. Well, remember your three angles have to add to be 180. So if I add these two angles together, I get 90. And if I take 90 away from 180, then that means that last angle has to be 90 degrees. And if you have a 90 degree angle, then we call that a right triangle. Okay, this one. If I add these two angles together, I get 88. And so if I take 88 away from 180, I get 92. So that's why this third angle is 92 degrees. And remember, if you ever have an angle that's bigger than 90 degrees, that makes an obtuse triangle. So three angles have to add to be 180 inside your triangle. So these two plus that one, these two plus that one have to make 180. Okay, this one wants to know which of the following cannot be the length of the third side? And it is D. So we already know two sides are 3 and 4. So if 4 was the other side, 
Let's just check for a second. Remember, the two smallest sides added up have to be greater than the third side. 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 is greater than 4. So this one works. If two of my sides are 3 and 4 and the other side is 5, remember, the two smallest sides added up have to be greater than the third. 3 plus 4 is 7, and 7 is greater than 5. So that one works as well. If I have the 3, 4, and 6, my two smallest sides, 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 is greater than 6, so that one works too. And if I try that third com or the fourth combination, 3, 4, and 7, if I add my two smallest sides, 3 and 4, 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 is not greater than 7, so that will not make a triangle. Okay, number 11. Remember, your three angles have to add to be 180. So 90 and 21, if I add the 90 and 21 together, I get 111. And if I take 111 away from 180, I get 69 degrees. So that's my missing side. <coughs> okay, number 12. Looking at this. I want to know something about angle Y. So remember, whenever you have a straight line, these two angles form a linear pair, so they add to be 180. So how much is this angle right here? 80 degrees. I have another straight line, so these two angles together form a linear pair. So how much is this one? 20 degrees. And now I can focus on my triangle. The three angles inside the triangle have to add to be 180, so the 80 and 20 make 100, and if I take that away from 180, that would give me my third angle, which would be 80 degrees. So that's how much Y is. Y is 80 degrees. Now another way we could have got that, once we knew that this one was 20, remember an exterior angle equals not the one next to it, but these two remote interior angles added up. So 20 plus 80 makes the 100. Or, once I got this was 80, this exterior angle equals not the one next to it, but these two remotes added up. So 80 plus 80 would make your 160. So we have a couple options of how we could have got that answer. Okay, let's go on to number 13. On uh, number 13, I know the three angles in my triangle add to be 180. So this angle plus this angle plus this angle makes 180. I combine like terms since they're on the same side of the equals, and I get x is 45. When it asks what the measure of angle E is, all I have to do is put 45 into this x, and 2 times 45 makes 90. Okay, number 14, I'm just going to work this one from beginning to end. Number 14, um, I could do this a couple of ways, so I'm not sure how you want me to do it. This is an exterior angle, so it equals these two remote interior angles added up. That's one way. Or I could figure out this angle right here and then know that these three together add to be 180. So we have choices. I'm going to do the exterior angle. This exterior angle, 80, equals not the one next to it, but these two remote interior angles added up. So it equals x plus 2x minus 4. I'm going to combine like terms. x plus 2x makes 3x. Recopy my minus 4, my equals, and my 80. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. I'm not going to show that. What do you get if you add 4? 84. And then I need to divide both sides by 3. And so I just need to figure out what 84 divided by 3 is. And 84 divided by 3 makes 28. So that's how much x is. <coughs> If I want to know the measure of angle C, I know it's 2x minus 4, so all I have to do is put the 28 in the x, take 2 times 28, and subtract 4, and that's going to make 
52 degrees. Okay, then it asks for the measure of angle ABC. ABC, that's this angle right here. Now I can do that just by looking at the picture. Here's my straight line. These two form a linear pair. So if this is 80, this one here is 100. And that's the measure of angle ABC. So 100 degrees. Now I could have found this 100 from the very beginning and then I could have set up the equation 100 plus x plus 2x minus 4 equals 180 and I could have done it that way. Lots of ways of doing this. Okay, this next one it says in triangle ABC so I'm just going to draw a triangle. I don't care what it looks like. A, B, C. I just put it there so I have a picture to work with and then if it isn't drawn to scale, it just isn't drawn to scale. It says the length of AB is 6, so the length of AB is 6, the length of BC is 8, and the length of AC is 12. Now, it may not look like that, but it doesn't matter. So it wants me to list the angles in order from largest to smallest. So remember, the largest angle is across from the largest side, so my largest side is 12, so ch -ch 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 -ch. The angle across from it is angle B, so that's my largest angle. My next largest side is this tw uh, 8, so the angle across from it ch -ch 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 is angle A. And my smallest side is the 6, and the angle across from that ch -ch 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 is angle C, so that would be my smallest angle. Okay, this next one talks about in triangle XYZ what these angles are. Once again, I don't really care what the picture looks like. I'm just going to draw a triangle XYZ. And then I'm going to fill in what they tell me, whether it looks like it's right or it doesn't. When it says the measure of angle X is 103, obviously, this does not look like 103 degrees, but it's okay. Measure of angle Y is 41, and measure of angle Z is 35. Okay, and we want to list the sides in order from shortest to longest. So the shortest side will be across from the smallest angle. So the smallest angle is 35, and the side across from it is side XY, or side YX. This next smallest angle is the 41, and the side across from that is side XZ, or side ZX. And my biggest angle, the 103, the side across from that is side YZ, or ZY. Okay, number 17, it wants to know what the length of the sides of this equilateral triangle are. So what do we know about an equilateral triangle? All the sides are the same. So I just need to set up an equation. I could set these two sides equal. I could set these two sides equal. I could set these two sides equal. It doesn't matter. Just pick two of them. I think I'll set these two sides equal. The 3x plus 6 equals the 6x minus 3. And I'm going to solve that. So I'm going to get rid of my positive 3x by subtracting 3x from both sides. The 6 a drop, the equals a drop. 6x minus 3x makes 3x, and then I drop the minus 3. Next thing I would do is add 3 to both sides, and if I add 3, I get 9, and then I'm going to divide by 3, and that makes x equals 3. But the question wants to know the length of the sides, so I need to plug my 3 in, 6 times 3 is 18, 18 minus 3 is 15. If this side's 15, how long is this side? 15, and this side, 15. And of course, you could always double check your work by plugging the 3 into that x and that x and see if it works. But it does. <coughs> okay, almost done. Number 18. It says, 
How would triangle ABC with vertices 4, 1, B, 2, negative 1, and C, negative 2, negative 1 be classified based off of sides and angles? Okay, so I'm going to draw a little coordinate plane. I'm going to start making some tick marks. Going by increments of 1 here. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is plot the point A, which is at 4, 1. So I am going to go right 4 and up 1. And that's my A. And I'm going to label it. Next I'm going to plot my B, which is 2, negative 1. So I go right 2 and down 1. That's my B. And C is negative 2, negative 1. So I go left 2 and down 1. And that's my C. I'm going to go ahead and draw this triangle out. Okay. So if I want to know something about the sides, I need to know how long each of these sides are. What do we use to figure out the lengths of these sides? We're going to use the distance formula. Now, I don't need to do that for segment BC. If it's ever a horizontal or a vertical distance, I can just count it. So let's count, count how far it is from B to C. One, two, three, four. So the length of BC is four. So the length of BC is four. I'm just gonna write that down here and then I'll go from there. Next, let's find the length of side AC. So the length of side AC, I need to use the distance formula. So I'm going to do it down here, the distance from A to C. Okay, remember the formula tells you to subtract your X's. So I'm working with AC, so negative 2 minus 4. Negative 2 minus 4, I subtract my X's and square it. Plus, then I subtract my Y's, negative 1 minus 1. And of course, I could have always gone 4 minus negative 2, 1 minus negative 1. I could have done that. This makes negative 6. Negative 6 squared is 36. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. And when you add those together, you get the square root of 40. And I'm just going to leave it like that. So AC has a length of the square root of 40. Okay, now I need to find the length of side AB. So let's find the, the length of side AB. So this time I'm going to use the distance formula between A and B. So here are my A and here are my B. So first I subtract my X's, 2 minus 4, close it, square it. Then I subtract my Y's negative 1 minus 1, close it, square it, and then let's work that out. 2 minus 4 makes negative 2, negative 2 squared makes 4, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, 4 plus 4 is 8, so I get the square root of 8, and that's how long side AB is. Okay, so are any of my sides the same lengths? No. If all your sides are different lengths, that means that this is a scalene triangle. If two of the sides would have been equal, it would be isosceles, and if all three were equal, it would have been equilateral. But none of the sides are the same length, so it is scalene. Okay, angle classification. This is where I want to find the slope of all the sides. So let's find the slope of segment BC first. So the slope of segment BC. What would you tell me that is? Zero. All horizontal lines have a slope of zero. Okay, now let's find the slope of segment CA. Remember to find slope, we count rise over run. So to get from C to A, I rise one, two, and I run one, two, three, four, five, six. So I rise two, I run six, 
and I can reduce that to one third. Next I'm going to find the slope of segment AB. <coughs> I always prefer to go from left to right, so what do I rise, what do I run? I rise 1, 2, I run 1, 2, so if my rise is 2, my run is 2, 2 divided by 2 makes 1. Now let's look at these slopes for a second. Are any of these opposite reciprocals? If these would have been opposite reciprocals at all, then we would have perpendicular lines, and if we had perpendicular lines, we would have a right angle, which means we'd have a right triangle. But since none of these are opposite reciprocals, I know it's not a right triangle. So I'm just going to look at my picture. Does it look like it's acute, or does it look like it's obtuse? This angle is bigger than 90. Angle B here is bigger than 90. So this is an obtuse triangle. Okay, our last two, we're almost there. Let's give a little quick smiley face. Yay! Almost there. Okay, I've got three triangles here. I've got this little one, I've got this little one, I've got the big guy. So if this is 90 degrees, what's this one right here? 90. Because these two together have to make 180. Okay, so if this is 90 and this is 70, focusing on this little triangle, this is 90 and this is 70, that makes 160. So angle 2 here would have to be 20 degrees. That way 90, 70, and 20 makes your 180. Okay, let's talk about angle 1. I'm going to focus on this triangle right here. My 90 and 50 makes 140, so angle 1 would be 40, which is actually what number 19 asked. Number 19 says, what's the measure of angle 1? So the measure of angle 1 is 40 degrees. And 20 says, what's the measure of angle 3? Well, here's a straight line. So these angles together will add to be 180. I just found this one to be 20. So 50 and 20 make 70. So angle 3 would have to be 110. And that's it. Now you're ready for your test. I hope you all do great. Thank you so much.